What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me, but I just got home off of an early morning flight, right? First thing through the door, I want to see my family. I love my family. You know, I'm a family man. I'm an advocate for families, right? Second thing, I got to get that hot shower because I got to throw the threads on. The threads make me feel like a million bucks. But the third thing through my mind and all throughout the trip is that I got to have that Tej pack. Tej makes my life uncomplicated. It's uncomplicated skincare for men. The first way that I started specifically was their level one system. It's a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin. Two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Here's the thing. My favorite part about Teach Henley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use and in what order. They really make in a process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin for men uncomplicated in addition to amazing skin members of Tej Hanley get tons of benefits including at least 20 percent off the retail price the ability to customize your box exclusive monthly deals you can pause and cancel at any time and you get free shipping and because Tej Hanley is sponsoring today's video they're offering my viewers an amazing deal right just click the first link in the description and you get 30 percent off your first box plus a free gift it's an amazing deal. You got to get started today. You're not out here trying to look like a dusty dusty. And if you travel as much as I do, which I'm sure most people don't, but you know me, I'm pushing my bag chasers in order to be in the top 5%, top 10%, top 1%. We got to make our lives uncomplicated. And Teach Henley is no better product. You got to look good. You got to smell good. And, and you can't be looking like a dusty dusty. Make sure you get started today. Click the link in the description. Get that Tej pack. Fill the Tej, my friends. What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of the Million Millionaire Morning Show, Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, year of our Lord. <laughs> What up, family? What's up, friends? I see y'all in the chat showing love to each other. What up? What up? What up? I know a lot of people is trying to figure out, Anton, what the heck happened with the stream yesterday? Well, let me fill you in on a couple of details. You say Anton got on the white tee today? <laughs> y'all want me to put on a hoodie? Yo, y'all been going in on me lately. Let me go get my hoodie. Enough of this. See what happened? See what y'all made me do? Made me go and get my black hoodie. Now, why is Anton going to get the black hoodie? Y'all making me self-conscious. <laughs> oh, y'all up here making me self-conscious. I love that I'm able to look. If you ain't got thick skin, my white tee is new. If you don't have thick skin on this internet, you are bound to drizzle. Now, let me tell you why I have my white tee. Well, I usually wear black tees, but I ran out the house and I only had my hoodie on. And then I got into the studio and I realized, oh, snaps, I don't have any more black tees. But I had a whole roll of white tees. So I said, well... Let's try something different today. Let's go ahead and put on a white tee. And as soon as I get on this live stream, y'all going to go ahead and start acting up on me. I said, okay, well, forget it then. Y'all don't like crisp white tees in the spring. We got our first days of spring on, and now y'all feeling some type of way. I said, okay, forget it then. Forget it then. Forget it then. I'm not going to no more white tees for Anton because 
Y'all want to be dirty. Y'all want to be crazy. <laughs> a lot of people asking me what happened to the, the live stream yesterday. Well, it was BET's fault. BET's fault. So obviously I was able to get the stream back. But I was just like, eh, they just messed up my vibe. I don't want to do it. So I just went ahead and ended it. Um, it is what it is. So we will be showing BET no love. I hope that they platform completely crashes out and that they don't do any streams and that they wind up getting sold to uh, a bunch of Native Americans that's just going to completely change it into something different. And that way it could be NET, Net Network, enough of this. So that's basically what happened. <laughs> that's basically what happened. But, but you know, life is good. It was a lit show. What's going on, y'all? How y'all feeling today? Y'all sponsored by Teej? Y'all got y'all Teej Gently? 30% off your first order and all orders after that plus a free gift. I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm going to go to the game tonight because I don't know if I got the time or the leeway to be able to watch the game or anything like that. What's up? How y'all feeling today? Give me one word inside of the chat. <laughs> FBT. I never liked them anyway. Forget BET. Give me one word in the chat to see what's happening. You feeling good. Said DJ Ace Productions. Um, you got that Tej Cartez. Make sure y'all get y'all Tej Henley and make sure y'all y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. You born here, you Native American. Motivated, great, great, inspired, tired, can't keep up, boss. Don't get tired. Depressed? That's always a man that's depressed. Attentive, sleepy. Good. In it to win it. Gucci, splendid, great. Gigantic, awesome, busy, Trump, groovy, blessed, amazing, chasing a bag, encouraged, blessed, abundance, thankful. Shout out to Al. Focus, productive, meetings. I was in a meeting too. That's why I got here a little later than usual. Excited, feeling awesome, gorilla grip. Don't be gorilla grip awesome. Chillaxing, brother AD cooking. Men don't get depressed, working, cooking, productive, I slimmer. I like that. I've been working out myself. Amazing, inspire, eating, tested. Get the whatever flying colors. Hungry, motivated, bag chasing, blessed, innovating, working, refined, full, energetic. Shout out to Fi Brown. Daughter having surgery today. Lord bless Sabrina's daughter to come through this surgery with flying colors in Jesus' name. Bag chaser. Drain had dental. Ooh, that dental is something else. Trust me. I know what you're feeling like, Nicole. I have four wisdom teeth pool. I got all of my teeth done, all of that. Good. Whoa, like, whoa. Here, focus. What up, love? See, what up to all of my friends in the building? I'm going to read the super chat shortly. I seen somebody in the chat that said uh, men don't get depressed. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Listen, I don't know who told you that. I don't know who is filling you in with all of this nonsense, but no, no, listen, listen, ladies and everybody else in the chat that's not familiar. Let me tell you something. Men have emotions just like every other creature on the face of this earth, including women. As a matter of fact, I will tell you that men get more emotional sometimes than women. And there's nothing wrong with that. The thing that I tell men is that you shouldn't lean into your emotions in order to make an informed decision. We hurt, we, we, we weep, we mourn, uh, we have problems and troubles and things that we deal with on a regular basis. Shout out to my dog, Ray. We absolutely get depressed. Now, the thing that we have to learn, and this is where the masculinity kicks in, is that we have to learn how to channel that more effectively so we can get the better results, right? Because we can't afford to make emotional decisions, and that's the difference. See, I want y'all to really understand the difference between somebody that's passionate and somebody that's emotional. An emotional man often makes a decision based off of how he feels, and that's not the best thing for you. We can't afford that. It's too many people that's dependent on us. It's too many people that work for us. We got to keep society running, you know? When a storm hits, you know, a guy may get tired, and he may want to go to sleep, and he's just absolutely weeping and all of this other stuff, but he got to make sure that he keep this power going or, you know, we have a lot of people that got to endure through. We got to endure through. 
And so for all of the women that's out here thinking that you could just throw every single thing that you want to on a man that you lean leaning next to, or let me go one step further. A lot of y'all will say, well, I want you to share everything with me, dump everything on me. I want to be your everything. Tell me everything. You don't want that. You don't want that. You really don't want these dark thoughts. Trust me. Trust me. Before I read these super chats and before I get into this show, because we got a show for you today. It's going to be a full one. It's a packed show. You don't want these thoughts. Do you really want the thoughts of the man that's insecure that don't know whether or not he's going to survive tomorrow because the only thing that he's thinking about is surviving right now? That he can't think about tomorrow when the only thing he can think about is what it is that he has to do right now in order to make sure that he feeds you today? You know, it's so many women on the internet that is insecure about their position in life when in reality they shouldn't be. And so he has to be everything for you and for himself. And you think that you can handle what he got going on? You can't. Baby, you can't. You're not built for this. You not built for this. You really ain't built for this. A lot of y'all think that y'all ready to be wives. You're not ready to be a wife. Because a wife also has to hold up and be there for the guy, not just be there when it's convenient for her or when she's deciding to level up. You know, I've seen people take vows. I was at a wedding and I've seen people take vows for better or for better. They just completely remix the vows. And I tell people even all the time on Wednesdays and stuff, I said, what's your duress language? Because when everything get bad, a lot of women decide that they want to dip out because the only thing that they can think of and the only narrative that's being communicated on social media is a man is supposed to be a provider. Until when? Until what? What if 2008 happened like it happened to me? You going to hold him down? You going to be there for him? What if everything starts to go wrong? Because I'm going to get back up and I'm going to get back on my grind. But do you know what it feels like for a man that is largely groomed to be one of the greatest men on the face of this earth? And I'm talking about myself in this instance, you know. For him to ultimately have to succumb to the idea that he got to move back into his parents' basement and you got to go with him. You willing to endure through that? You willing to move back into the mama's basement? You don't know what that do to him. It breaks you. It break your soul. It break your spirit. It humbles you more than anything in the face of this earth. When you look at your pregnant wife or you look at your small daughter and then you look outside of the door and they repossessing your car, it's a whole nother ball game. You built for that because that's what marriage is. See, marriage is not just about the good times. It's also about the bad times. We talk about money and we talk about bag chasing. But let me tell you something. Are you built for the things that men really go through? I don't think you're built for it. Don't tell me that men can't get emotional. Don't tell me that we can't get depressed. We absolutely get depressed. Sometimes we have moments of depression and then we figure out how to get through that and then we move on to the next thing. Depression ain't always even tied to finances. Depression can be tied to a lot of things. You know, when my father died, when my father passed away, and I know through so many guys go through this in so many different ways. When my father passed away, I didn't have the opportunity for the first year and a half to mourn. It didn't hit me until I was sitting in the parking lot when I was about to go into the gym a year and a half later. And then I'm like, damn, my father ain't even here no more. My best friend, I used to talk to this guy three and four hours a day. I was building this restaurant for him. And the only reason I finished it was for him. I didn't have the opportunity to mourn. You know why? Because everybody else was dependent on me. I had to make sure I buried him. I had to pay for all of the funeral arrangements. I had to make sure that my mom was taken care of. I had businesses that was thriving and things that we was going through and tumultuous situations that was happening in corporate America. And guess what? Nobody cared. Nobody cared. When I went to work after I got off a of bereavement, when I went to work and after I got off a of bereavement, after them few days that I got off a of bereavement, 
guess what? They still wanted their stuff. We still had deadlines to hit. We still had developers to supply. We still had a, a business to build. We still had a bank to run. And we still had things that we wanted to make sure that we took care of. And it was like, oh, man, sorry for your loss. And then 15 minutes later, they was like, you coming to this meeting or no? See, a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all women, y'all have the, the ability to be able to grieve. You have the, the, the space to take your time and get yourself together, to go through your postpartum or whatever it is that you're suffering through. Let me tell you something, man. Y'all couldn't believe, and I have not told some of these stories, and I probably won't ever tell any of these stories, but let me tell you something. You would not believe some of the things that we've had to endure through, that I personally had to endure through. Maybe one day I'll tell you a story, but I'm going to just tell you something. When I say, for example, that uh, Rita's feet will never touch the ground regardless of what uh, you know, ever happen, hypothetically, whatever happened, obviously nothing would ever happen. But um, when I when I say that her feet will never touch the ground, you have no clue, no clue the type of stuff that we've had to deal with, with family and friends, people turning their back on us and wishing on your downfall and setting you up and Now, I remember, um, <laughs> see, if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. If I just told you, you wouldn't believe it. I remember one night um, I was taking her home, and obviously this was before I ever got married to her. And I was taking her home or whatever as I had picked her up, and I'm sitting there, and it's a, it's, it's a car, and it's just people that are sitting in the car, and I'm trying to figure out what the heck is that car doing? What the heck is that car doing? Hello. Hey, you busy? Nope, what's going on? Do you remember when I was taking you home that night and that car was parked over there? Huh? Do you remember that night that I was sit taking you home and I stopped and I parked? And that car was parked over there, and there was a bunch of people in the car. I don't know if you remember that or not. Mm -mm. You don't remember that? Mm -mm. All right, let me let me jog your memory a little bit. And then uh, wind up being a high-speed chase and the police. I vaguely remember that. I cut the lights on, and then we going down the street, and... The police, and then they wind up zooming past me and going to get them. You don't remember none of that? I vaguely remember that. Oh, but my God. Was we leaving from um, from up from your house, though? I was dropping you off at home. Right, but we left from, oh, well, I can say the street. You don't live there no more. We left from Greenlawn, though, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, I, I, vaguely, I vaguely remember that. How do I you not remember that? that? I remember being parked somewhere and then it was a car parked with the lights out. But then I don't really remember nothing after that. And then I went after him instead of running from him. I ran after him. And then the police wound up coming and I spotted him and I pulled over. Well, I don't want to tell all of the story. What made you bring that up though? Nothing. Don't Wait. worry about it. What? I was, I'm talking on the live stream. Okay. All right. Yeah. She don't even remember all of the stuff that we've been through. Anyways, I guess the point that I'm making is that we got to be everything to everybody. We got to be everything to everybody. We got to be a provider. We got to be a protector. We got to keep our head on a swivel. We can't sit with our back to the door. We got to be everything to everybody. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. If I told y'all some of the stuff and I gave y'all some of the details of what guys go through and the fact that nobody cares at the end of the day, you still got to show up and you still got to take care of business and you still got to be on top of things. And that's the end of the story. Get out of your feelings. Nah, it wasn't a citizen's type of arrest. It was something else. It was uh, it was a setup.
it was a setup. And um, I had to make a decision right then and there. And it was a difficult decision because I had a part, you know, her, she was sitting right there in the passenger seat. And I had to make a decision at that particular time. And it was a. Um, it turned out to be a high speed chase. And then um, it was something else. So we I've lived a wild, 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 wild life. But guys go through stuff all the time. And a lot of women think that they built to be men, but y'all not really built to be men. Y'all not ready for this. Anyways, uh, y'all ready to get started with the show? Let me read some of these super chats. First of all, I want to give a shout out to my cash appers that's holding me down as usual. Shout out to the cash app crew. Shout out to the cash app crew when they hold me down. I want to give a shout out to my dog, Michael, in the building. Shout out to Michael. I appreciate you for holding me down. And my dog, Mike That Dude. Shout out to Mike That Dude. We love you, Mike That Dude. You have always been holding us down, and I appreciate you. Frank White says, I'm just here. Uh, just blocked on the other page. What? What, Frank? We got to figure that out. What did you do? Psychedelic Sense. Love Psychedelic Sense. What up, what up, what up, what up, angry black veteran? We got a whole show built for you. Stick around. It's going to be a heck of a show. Let me give a shout out to Apex Life. <laughs> Apex Life says, got to send support to the brother who helped me put things into perspective in 2021. Still growing, man. Thank you. Hey, hey, we going to get there. We going to get there. We're going to get there, Apex Life. Shout out to you and thank you for holding me down and supporting the platform. K Cooper says, no, we like the white tea. Yep, and my white tea. <laughs> I'm technically Tim says, time for the greatest morning show on earth. Shout out to my Canadian bread ran in the building. J Dub says, Stairmaster was giving you the business yesterday. Great work, bro. Yeah, we going to get there. We going to get there. We working. Latrell M says, the haters tried to stop yesterday, but not today. We back. We back. Shout out to Latrell. Gotta love Silverado. It says Ron DeSantis signed a bill cracking down on public homelessness. Hmm. Might have to address that. Look into that. Ray Sean, one of my greatest students of all time. Anton, thank you for leading by example. Just passed my two million views on YouTube. One of my greatest students of all time. Shout out to Ray. Shout out to Ray. Boy, oh boy, Ray is my guy. I appreciate you. I love you. Run it up. Run it up. Wendell Kilgore in the building says, good morning, AD. Salute to you. Appreciate all that you do. Thank you, Wendell. Spaces says, Kirk Frankly, Tiny Desk, Tiny Desk in the Morning also slaps. Never seen that one. Mr. Lot, another one of my Detroit brethren. <laughs> Good morning to the chasers. Remember that sometimes trial and tribulation does, doesn't happen to you, but for you. Always trying to find a lesson. Man, Mr. Lott, that is absolutely the truth. I cannot state it any better than you put it, big dog. Man, you just said my life says amen on one. Shout out to amen on one and everybody holding me down. Trav Reyes says, uh, what streaming software do you use for recording? Ah, ah. I might have to break listen that is a patreon conversation of how i do all that i do that is a patreon conversation it's gonna cost you more than two dollars big dog if you're not a part of the bag chasers make sure you tap into the patreon link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat i'm actually putting together a video speaking to that specifically join the bag chasers eric daniel says so respect your grind i so respect your grind shout out to you Angry Black Veteran says, fan, uh, I got your back, and he threw up the super sticker. Shout out to the Black Veteran. Yeah, Rob Brown says, does your white tee hang down to your knees? <laughs> yes. All right, sis, listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let's go ahead and get started with the show. The first thing that I want to start off with, and make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. The link is in the description. We do big, big things inside of the Patreon. All right, y'all ready? Let's get to it. Quick hits. Segment of the show where we got to keep y'all informed of what's happening in these streets, man. 
First thing first on quick hits, remember that fourth suspect that we was talking about? Well, they wind up capturing him. I hope y'all got y'all five thousand dollars for for making sure that uh, a seer boom was captured. Captured the fourth suspect in a mass I got shooting you, you, at a SEPTA bus stop where eight Northeast High School students were injured. U.S. Marshals say the search for 17-year-old Asir Boone led them to South to Virginia, where Boone was in hiding after the shooting nearly two weeks ago. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Jason Martinez. And I'm Sheba Russell. Boone is now awaiting extradition back here to Philadelphia. And Seanette, you spoke to the U.S. Marshals about Boone's capture and time on the run. So uh, officials say that they believe that Boone took a bus, maybe a Greyhound, to flee to Virginia. They believe that he did so, feeling the pressure that they were closing in on him. Hmm. A series of videos showing 17-year-old Asir Boone in a gray hooded shirt, captured and cuffed, taken into custody. He's the last of four suspects wanted in the ambush shooting of eight students at a SEPTA bus stop nearly two weeks ago. We believe that Mr. Boone immediately after being identified took a bus down to Alexander, Virginia and has been there since the middle of last week. U.S. Marshals, along with the Capital Area Regional Fugitive Task Force, arrested Boone around 12.15 this afternoon in Alexandria, Virginia. The arrest comes nearly a week after they released his name and picture to the public and announced a reward. Late last evening, we developed an apartment complex that had ties to Philadelphia that we thought Mr. Boone was going to be. Investigators say this morning a female associate to Boone who had ties to Philly answered their door knock. And confirmed that Asir Boone was in there. He complied to our officer's commands and he was arrested without incident. The other three suspects are in custody and charged. 18 year old Jamal Tucker turned himself in Friday, March 8th, two days after the shooting. U.S. Marshals tracked down 18 year old Anile Bugs and 19 year old Jermod Carter. As for Boone, authorities believe he was in Germantown, North Philly, then Montgomery County, staying with former associates, but then fled south once his identity was made public by investigators and the reward announced. But again, Alexandria, Virginia was the end of the road for the teen. He didn't really say anything. Our deputies described it more as he looked relieved, he looked tired, but he wasn't asked any questions and we didn't ask any questions of him. And so we mentioned that Boone did have some help. We asked authorities whether any other people could face charges as it relates to them helping him. Jason Sheba, they say that that will be up to the district attorney. Listen, I hope baby girl got her $5,000. I hope baby girl got her $5,000. You know what I'm saying? Because she definitely was the one that called and was like, listen, this boy going to get caught. He crazy. He can't be living with me. And so he ain't got no money. He ain't got nowhere to go. He ain't got no lawyers. Let me go ahead and get this five bands. Hey, baby girl, don't spend it all in one place. Don't go down there to Mexico and go and get you a BBL. All right? Put it towards your student loans. Uh, pay off them baby hairs and get that after pay up out of there. So thank God we finally found all four suspects that does not solve for or mitigate the idea that they have been on the run and terrorizing the community and this is just the first time that they probably got caught see most of the time what people don't really take into consideration is that uh, for a long time prior to you actually getting in trouble or getting caught you probably was doing a whole bunch of other stuff that we just didn't recognize or we didn't see this is just the time that you got caught doing it you know what i'm saying so go ahead throw them under the jail throw away the key i'm a mic i might even go down to uh Look at the trial, sit in the audience, and then yell in the background, ah, I can't believe y'all out there shooting the bus stops. I might be down there. But shout out to the snitches. They are the real heroes of the community, not the stepbaby daddy, but the snitches. All right? In addition to that, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. We want to make sure that we, uh, a 27-year-old mother was murdered at a subway. I believe this was in D.C. Check it out, man. Police in Prince George's County still searching for two men wanted for the murder of a young mother outside a fast food restaurant. It happened in District Heights over the weekend. Fox 5 is getting to show you more surveillance video of the crime that's devastated a large and loving family. Bob Barnard is live in the District Heights right now and with the latest with this investigation. Bob. 
Hey there, Shamari. In the surveillance video you're about to see, you get a pretty good look at the alleged gunman's face. A man wanted for murder after what appeared to be just an ordinary visit to this Subway sandwich shop here on Silver Hill Road in District Heights. First, a little more about the victim. This is Jessica Somerville, the 27-year-old Prince George's County woman shot and killed early Sunday morning. Her brother, T-Rock, says Jessica was an employee of the U.S. Postal Service. Rebuke your name being T-Rock. Man, get, your, get, get a regular name. T-Rock. <sighs> and the mother of a precious little girl, six-year-old J.C. This is surveillance video released by Prince George's County Police. Jessica's last moments alive. We've blurred her image on the left there. You can see the two murder suspects on the right, inside the subway, also at the counter. It seems as though there may have been a brief interaction, but that's it. Then, minutes later, one of the suspects covers his face with his hat. Police say that's the gunman, the one who is now being sought for murder. Soon, the women leave the restaurant. The two Wait, 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 wait. So they didn't know that it was cameras everywhere, including in a restaurant, leading up to them taking a 27-year-old mother's life? Jesus Christ. Protect the community. Protect the community. Hold it down. Hey, I bet you that, I bet you that it's going to be some people with some T-shirts on saying, free my brother. Free, free my brother. B-R-U-D-D-H-A. Free my brother. Look like a hit to me, Connie. Look just like a hit to me. Two men would quickly follow and walk straight to the victim's car, one on each side. You'll see the front driver's side door open. It appears the man with his face covered reaches in, and there's a struggle. And then, what was to be the fatal gunshot. Somebody else in the car gets out of the back seat and goes after the gunman. It's a brief struggle with punches thrown before that person runs away in what seems to be sheer terror. It is a man with a gun they were struggling with. Soon, the suspects leave the parking lot. Those with Jessica appear frantic over the realization she's been fatally wounded. Mm. Her family says Jessica had stopped at the subway with her U.S. Postal Service co-workers on their way home from their Saturday shift. Prince George's County Police are hoping somebody will recognize this man. If you know him, you'll know it's him. Police say people are calling crime solvers with tips. They're hoping the calls keep coming. Every day you walk past a killer. Every day you walk past killers. Sometimes some of y'all are riding with a killer. You riding with somebody that's wanted for something, that's that, that doing something in their past, and they trying to wash it away or, or act like they don't remember it. Man, be careful who you riding with. Be careful who you go to lunch with. Ain't nobody safe out here in these streets anymore. Zero zilch nada. Last but not least, at the top of the totem pole, an Atlanta mother. Ain't nothing like a good old Atlanta scam that get us going started on a Millionaire Morning Show. An Atlanta mother tells her kid to steal a purse, teaching her how to scam too. Shout out to Atlanta. Showed you this video that police say shows a mother telling her child to steal. Now tips from Fox 5 viewers have led to her arrest. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight for Fox 5 News at 5. I'm Tom Haynes. I'm Courtney Bryant. The video was shocking. Police say a mother used her small child to snatch a purse at a busy restaurant. Now that mother, Kenya Butler, faces charges. Fox 5's Doug Evans broke the story and has the latest developments all new at 5. Noonan police say it was Kenya Butler seen on that surveillance video eating with a group of others at a Noonan restaurant when she is seen getting up from the table with her seven-year-old daughter, then taking that girl to an empty booth and encouraging her to steal an unattended purse. It was this shocking video played on Fox 5 that prompted a number of people to call the Newton Police Department with the mother's name. The video shows a little girl taking a purse from an empty booth and hiding it as she leaves the restaurant. Police say it's clear to them the mother put the child up to it. After it aired on the media, um, 
we received a couple of phone calls um, that tipped us off and we were able to identify Kenya Butler as the offender in this case uh, based on those phone calls. The woman's been identified as a Union City mother of three, 27 year old Kenya Butler. She kind of looked like the uh, the brick lady. Don't she look like the brick lady a little bit? She kind of give me give me brick lady vibes. Man, shout out to all of my ladies in Atlanta that's out here finessing and stealing and teaching their kids to do the same thing. Mother of three in a restaurant, looking to finesse, always got their eyes on a swivel, looking to find out where your purse is. Can't go nowhere. And then don't y'all realize that cameras is literally in every single crack and crevice. It's on the phones. The devices is listening to you. It's in the air. It's cameras everywhere. It's cameras everywhere. What y'all thought that, that, that was just going to be the end of it? Look, man, you going to jail. Your, your record is now going to be put out there. It ain't going to be sealed. It's going to be unsealed. Y'all out here just being crazy. She's charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor and theft by taking. Her seven-year-old daughter is not the one in trouble here. Police say the mother is the one seen on the surveillance video taking the girl over to the empty booth, saying something to the child, and then some dunks on. as the little girl leaves with the purse. Is our dunks? Dunks is the new uh, black Air Force Ones. Police say the group with the mother quickly left the restaurant after the purse was taken. Look at all of the rest of the women scammers. Look at all of the rest of the women scammers. They stole a person and all of the little hussies. Ugh. Do you know what most servers tell me? You know what most servers tell me? Most servers tell me that they hate, absolutely hate, seeing a group of mothers, not mothers, they, they hate seeing a group of women coming into their restaurant, a group of a specific group of women coming into their restaurant. That's what they tell me. They can't stand it. A whole bunch of women coming in at the same time, they're going to be there. They're going to be loud. They're going to sit there for a whole long time. They're going to take up a lot of, lot of space. They're going to be there for three, four, five hours, and they're not going to really even tip that good. And they're going to expect for you to give exceptional service, and they might be stealing your purse. Skipping out on a more than $500 bill. Police are still trying to identify this. <laughs> they skipped out on a $500 bill. See, I wasn't even expecting that part. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Skipping out on a more than $500 bill, police are still trying to identify this man, who police say it appears from the surveillance video is the one responsible for the bill. If so how did the man become responsible for the bill, but all of the women were sitting there at the table? Okay, so wait a minute. Y'all stole a purse. You stole food. You skipped out on the bill. And now the man with the fake love rich sex shirt on is the one that's being held accountable. I wasn't expecting that. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that is your quick hits, y'all. That is your quick hits. Jesus. It's getting worse out here in these streets. It's getting bad. Read some of the super chats. Shout out to Mr. Youngblood City says. I've been quiet lately, but I can promise you it's for a good reason. Thank you for all the value that you add from me and my wife, Anna. We love you guys. Be safe. Shout out to Mr. Youngblood City out there on the West Coast getting to a bag. We love you, Mr. Youngblood City. P. Shank in the building says, good morning, Mr. Anton Daniels and the Millionaire Morning Show. Appreciate you, P. Shank. You always hold me down. We love you, baby. Marriage, Politics, and Sports says, definitely looks like a hit. Look crazy out here. Y'all better be careful. One minute you hear, next thing you know, it's all over. Right after you got your Subway sandwich. Uh, Jada Legend Sports Media says her look screams bum chick vibes. They all scream the same look. And what are y'all ordering where y'all getting a $500 bill from a regular diner? That's a red flag to me. When you see a whole bunch of women order a whole bunch of food, go ahead and get the security and put them at the front door. So that we can make sure that they ain't out here stealing. 
Shout out to Jaquan Day, uh, Danley. Shout out to Jaquan. I appreciate you for holding me down, my friend. Thank you for holding me down. King Stennis says, not the man responsible for the bill. And then they automatically threw the bill on him. <laughs> Shout out to Pookie's friend Ray Ray says, they must have had 30 ham steaks for $500. They probably went to take some food to go too. Shout out to you, Mr. Mr. Ray. All right, y'all, let's get into the show. We're going to go ahead and start with the squatters. Again, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description, as well as pinned to the top of the chat. You know about T. Hanley, don't you? That's in the description also. Squatter takes over a whole woman's home. Now, I must have received at least 30 emails from 30 different people telling me that I had to bring this on the Millionaire Morning Show. Okay, so we here. I haven't checked it out. But we're going to review it. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Let's get to it, y'all. I don't know the law. Yeah, there's laws. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. How about that? A squatter standoff. A property owner confronts a group of people she says moved into her million-dollar home in Queens. And our cameras were rolling as dozens of officers I get there, Antonio. Up. Several people were taken away in handcuffs, and one of those arrested may surprise you. Investigative reporter Dan Krauth joins us now with more on what happened. Tell us, Dan. Well, this is a very big growing problem. I received dozens of tips from viewers about this in just the past week. I went to do what I thought was going to be a routine interview. Instead, we capture what police and property owners are dealing with on a daily basis. I have video of you. Who are you? Who are these people? Out the situation. Yeah, but they're right. House, man. Relax. No, 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 no. To understand how this day ended, we need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests, we have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met Adele and Deloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he locked it. But she's been locked out. She claimed squatters moved in on February 6 and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me back up for a minute. Before we get into the squatters issue, shout out to Boom Sooner. A Boomer Sooner. I'm going to read that shortly. Is that a million dollar home in New York? Y'all got to get out of these cities with these uh, uh, crazy prices for these homes. Is that a million dollar home in New York? Jesus. Before we get into the squatter part, that is Chris James Elmatic? Really? <laughs> What are you paying for? That's over a million? Location what? Queens ain't? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm not familiar with it as much as I think that it is. Yo, that is crazy. That is crazy. That is a basic $200,000 home to me. That is not a million dollar home. What do I know? What do I know? <sighs> Talk about a bubble. Talk about a bubble. No yard, no attached garage, no nothing. I'm out here building mansions. Jesus Christ. All right, let's get back to the squatting. You can't go inside of your own home. It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. And now she's back. Just after wrapping up our interview, a woman showed up. What are you doing in the house? Are you renting this house? I'm not renting this. Why are you here? She unlocked the front door, saw our cameras, and took off. It's open. Let's go in the house. It's open. Adele and her daughter, with the property deed in hand, went inside. This is my furniture. These are my curtains. She didn't just find her belongings inside. There's a man sleeping right there. Get out of Jesus. my house. She found two men. How long have you lived here? I moved in about two days ago. They've called the police on me, and I've called the locksmiths. I didn't come in illegally. The door was open. Police started interviewing neighbors and looking for documents. Do you have something that shows that you've been here for more than 30 days? They took the man who told me he had been renting for two days out in handcuffs. They got one out. And escorted the other guy off the property. Now you're afraid to come out. I'm not what do you mean escorted the other one? What do you mean escorted the other one? Hold on, that's trespassing, that's breaking and entering, that's burglary, 
That's all of that. What do you mean? Where are we living? This I feel like I'm in a twilight zone. I honestly feel like I'm in a twilight zone. So you could get some, you could get your luggage? You brought luggage? Jesus. <laughs> Not coming out. This house is empty. This is my home. My locksmith is on the corner waiting to change my locks. And that's not fair. It's not fair that I, as the homeowner, should be having to go through this. How are you doing? Minutes later, a locksmith showed up. But police gave her a warning before they left. I may end up in handcuffs today if this man shows up here and says that I have illegally evicted him. I said to them, let him take me to court the way I've been told to take him to court. But today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? Wait, wait, wait. So the police arrested and took the other guy off the property. They didn't book him, Dano? How, why did they take him off in handcuffs if, if he just was going to show back up? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I am so confused. This is crazy. This guy just literally broke down my door. Broke through myself and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. No, he did not. Yes, he did. No, he did. And he so did you. Him. You broke through the front door. Officer. The man called the police on her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. No, that's not a different person. He said that he came through the door with the guy that the police had already escorted off the property. Listen to what he said. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were chained. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? With the other guy, police took off the property. So the other guy that the police took off the property was obviously released. And then he went and going and got another guy. And then they came back in and they busted up down in the crib. Jesus Christ. Bruh, I know what I heard. I, I listened carefully. I know what I heard. That is not. This, this guy just literally broke down my door, broke through myself and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. No, he did not. Yes, he did. No, he did. And he so did, did you. Ma you broke through the front door. Officer. The man called the police on her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. He needs to go to court. They consider this a landlord tenant issue. This is crazy. And by law, it has to be handled through the housing court, not with police. If you own this house, you would not want I her inside. I don't own the house. I don't own this. Exactly. Yes. She does. Yes. But then once again, you should know how law works i and do know how it there's, works there's rules to the as you got to go to court and send me to civil court he says he signed a lease in october but wouldn't tell us with who i got proof longer than that show us the proof but who are you for me to show i showed it to cops dan with channel 7 news if you don't want to show it you I'll don't want to show, show it proof. come here brother i like that i would i would like to see it he didn't show me a lease this, this is, is a bill is a bill for work he says he had done to the house he didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. Just bills. So Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, a for being in house, my man. for being in my own home. It's and not, not and where's your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed That's is current and legal. Arrested for unlawful eviction. She changed the locks on a man who claims he lives there. So how does this all end then? When do you the, leave? The way it ends is, is either she pays me my money that I put into the house, pay me the money and I'll leave or send me to court and we deal with the judge in court. It's that simple. It's not that simple. It's a long process. Eviction can take close to two years to complete. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Hey, New York, hold this L, man. Hold this L, New York. 
Whoa. Whoa, they arrested her and took this chick to jail for a house that she has a deed for. Who created squatter's rights? I got to do some research now. Give me a second. I just got to know what the heck is happening. Who created squatters? Squatters, the main goal of squatters' rights is to discourage the use of vigilante justice. If landowners were allowed to use violence and the threat of violence to evict the squatter, the situation could quickly, quickly escalate and become dangerous. The Homestead Act of 1862 was signed by President Abraham Lincoln. Wow. Historically squatting occurred in the United States during the California Gold Rush, even when colonial European settlers established land rights. There was squatting during the Great Depression in Hoobersville, also during World War II. Shanty towns returned to the U.S. after the Great Recession in 2007 and 2009. And in the 2010s, there were increasing numbers of people occupying foreclosed homes using fraudulent documents. In some cases, a squatter may able, be able to obtain home ownership of the property due, through adverse possession. Wow, this is crazy. Operation Homestead, OH, occupied 300 units in Seattle in the early 1990s. In New York City, squatters occupied 32 buildings, some of which the Urban Homesteading Assistance Board then helped them to legalize. And that's where you start to find all of the problems. Shout out to New York City. Y'all know they don't play that down south. They don't play that down south. I got something for a squatter. I got something for a squatter. I could fix that. Somebody said, don't abandon your property. Stop being greedy and rent it out. Rent it out. Occupy it with control. Y'all see this? Hold on. Let me show this. Hold on. Let me show what people are saying. Don't abandon your property. Stop being greedy. Rent it out. Occupy it with control. Y'all see this? These are the type of people that's voting for Biden. These are the type of people that's voting for Biden. It's people in the chat that's literally defending this. People in the chat is defending this. Shh. I dare you. I dare you. I triple dog dare you. I double dog dare you to play that in my place. And any place that I'm a part of, I triple dog dare you to play that game with me. See, listen, that junk play out with them. We ain't got to get no police involved. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. We ain't going we ain't got to talk about court. We ain't got to do none of that. We going I I man, listen. I dare you to go inside of my property and claim it. And talk about some work that you done did. Uh, we absolutely, positively, listen, I know people that done done more for less. I know people in real life that done done more for less. And they have no problem fixing this. No problem fixing what it is that we got going on. Come through, come through. I dare you. I dare you. Come on, stick around. Bust through the door and see what's happening. It only take a couple different situations, and then we gonna go ahead and get that solved. We gonna go ahead and make sure that they get that they get they get you know handled. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm gonna do a squatters task force. I'm gonna be getting people up out these homes. Hey y'all y'all got a squatter? Y'all need a fixing? A quick fixing? I can get that done for you. Make sure you email me at Anton Daniels. 413 at gmail.com. We can get that taken care of. Antonio T in the building says, have you heard about migrants able to buy firearms? Oh, we going to get there. We're getting there. Trust me. I'm going to cover that today. I promise you we are. Shout out to Antonio T. Hold me down. Boomer Sooner says, from 269, what up, though? 
You've brought value to my life. I pick, appreciate the gems you've dropped and I picked up. Shout out to Boomer Sooner. I like that name. Roland Hills Calendar is in the building. Shout out to Roland Hills Calendar. Said, uh, bought a four apartment house in 2018 in a quiet Coral Way neighborhood in Miami and now it's worth double. Split my time between New Jersey and Miami, flipping and renting. Shout out to you. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. Uh, Chris Monroe, uh, St. Louis says, another reason I will never invest one red cent in these janky states that put the squatters over the homeowners. Buying a smart location. Shout out to Anton and the fam. Let me speak to that really quickly. When y'all decide that y'all want to invest in real estate, you also got to take into consideration. Like one of the reasons why I tell people never invest in real estate outside of the place that you're familiar with or the place that you live is because you don't know what the state laws are. You don't know what the environment is like. You don't know what the neighborhood is. You don't know what the squatters rights problems are. You don't know none of that. And so a lot of people just jump into a property and they don't even realize that they putting themselves under duress. Ain't that self snitching, Anton? No, that's that's uh that's warning you. I ain't no self snitching over here. We gonna get to it. Mister Vince says I got something for them squatters to get them out. I do too. I do too. Absolutely. Uh, Jaquan Danaly says, "Where's her man at?" Appreciate you, Pookie's friend Ray Ray is in the building. Says, "I actually had two black female squatters and couldn't get them out, so I decided to stay with them." Years later, now I got five kids and two baby mamas and no, <laughs> no home. Shout out to my friend Pookie in the building. Antonio Watkins says these squatters is wild. I left that type of lifestyle, um, but I still can make phone calls. Same day evictions with me. Same day. Same, same night. We ain't going to talk about the daytime. We'll let them have it in the day. The night is mine, though. Tuesdays and Thursdays is mine. JC Inc. says no male companion, hence the squatters. It's messed up, bro. Jada Legend, Legend Sports Media says, um, I'm glad I live in Jersey and not NYC. That's crazy, Anton. Jersey ain't got no squatters rights. Ray Ranger Bear says, I'm calling the goons. You will get off of my property. Quentin, my dog Quentin says, Boomer Sooner is an OU Sooners thing. Gross. Hook em horns. Shout out to my dog, Quentin. All right, let's continue to get into it. We got a full show for y'all today. Um, immigrants. Immigrants. So over in Chicago, listen, I'm not even trying to do a show on Chicago today. I made up in my mind that I wasn't even going to do a show on Chicago today. Shout out to Jamal Fowler. I'm going to read that super chat shortly. I made up in my mind today I wasn't going to even do a show on Chicago today. And guess what? We right back there, right back at it, right back in Chicago. Did you know that it's a, it's a judge that was appointed by Obama that basically ruled that illegal immigrants or migrants can have pistols and guns? And then Mexico said, listen, whoever cross over into your border, finders, keys, keepers, finders, keepers, we not accepting y'all deporting nobody back over here, regardless of whether or not they crossed over from Mexico. Man, it's getting bad inside the United States of America. Make sure y'all tap it. Oh, snaps. My, uh, um, what's his name? I was just watching the movie over my brother's house over the weekend. Norbit. Norbit? Hold on, let me see something. <laughs> oh, my God. Norbit? Norbit. She look a little better than Norbit, but Norbit. Shout out to Norbit. I keep seeing Norbit everywhere. Maybe it's just the fact that I just I like Norbit. Maybe it's the fact that I like Norbit. So anyways, apparently uh, a Chicago judge decided that they wanted to make sure <laughs> that they wanted to make sure that they can help migrants. Okay, well, we're going to get there. Again, make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. Also, teach Hanley 30% off your first order plus a free gift to keep you from looking like Norbit. 
Norbit. A judge in Illinois just ruled illegal immigrants have the right to keep and bear arms. So rather than the circle with the line through it, we need like a thumbs up emoji there. The case is pretty simple. Police arrested an illegal immigrant living in Chicago with a gun back in 2020. They charged him for violating the federal law banning illegal immigrants from having guns. It's been on the books for a long time. Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman just decided the Second Amendment applies to him, the illegal immigrant, like everybody else. So he can have a gun. How do you decide that people that's not even legally here get rights? <laughs> do y'all know do y'all know that y'all actually vote y'all judges in? A lot of people are not familiar with that. A lot of people don't even know who they're voting into office. This is why I say it, it, it takes a level of understanding and y'all got to start participating in the election process and understand what these people stand for. Do you guys know that the judges that is presiding over your cases and determining the laws and, and ruling in your favor and that's being established, this, this judge was established by, by, I believe, Obama. Is that what they said? U.S. District Court for Northern District of Illinois. Y'all got to get involved. Y'all got to get involved. You want to know why you're getting so many long sentences? It's because of the prosecutors that you vote in and the judges that's ultimately in place. In her decision, she wrote that Umberto Flores received and used the handgun solely for self-protection and protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest in the spring of 2020, the summer of love. Court documents show Flores fired the gun at moving cars during the BLM riots in Chicago. He argues police officers warned him about looters who were approaching his neighborhood. Key to this ruling is that the judge says Flores' conduct, conduct heavily impacted her decision. He had no criminal record and was not considered a risk to public safety. This case is just one of many challenging that federal statute that prevents illegal immigrants from possessing a firearm. There are cases unfolding in states nationwide. Shan Wu is here, former federal prosecutor, term criminal defense attorney, once a uh, very senior officer at the DOJ. Good to see you. Um, <clears throat> should I be shocked that an Obama appointee found a gun control law that she didn't like? <laughs> uh, no, but I think it's very fascinating that this whole push towards expanding the deference to the Second Amendment uh, in some ways has kind of come full circle here, where something that really seems counterintuitive, the idea that someone who's not here legally still has that right and you can't use this particular statute, which is commonly known as the felon in possession statute. But the way it's written, she really zeroed in on the language. He's not a felon. And the gray area, of course, is whether or not his status and, frankly, I think the way he was using the gun calls a little bit into question, you know, how peaceful right. he is. So he was shooting at moving cars. I just want to make sure that we all get, get this together. He's shooting at moving cars. I thought, personally, I thought, now I could be wrong, I thought that Chicago and New York had some of the strictest gun laws in the entire country. I could be wrong. I thought Chicago and New York, correct me if I'm wrong, had some of the strictest gun laws in the United States of America. And so her ruling was based off of how she felt about him, not whether or not he was actually here legally. Okay, got it. Let's pivot for a moment. Now, considering this whole migrant crisis, because I've been covering it for like two years now, considering this whole migrant crisis, did y'all know that Mexico is saying that it won't accept migrants sent back under the Texas law? Got to check this out. Hello, thank you for joining us. We begin our report at the southern border, specifically in Texas, where state authorities may now arrest and prosecute migrants suspected of crossing illegally. Supreme Court Tuesday allowed a Texas law known as SB 4 to go into effect while a lower court continues to weigh a lawsuit brought by the Biden administration claiming the law is unconstitutional. The federal government has traditionally had the sole power over immigration. 
And CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe is following the president's response. Razor wire and Texas National Guard troops along the U.S.-Mexico border reinforced tonight by the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, Lone Star State Sheriff and police departments can arrest, jail, and judges can prosecute migrants accused of illegally entering the U.S. He's not denying illegal entry. President Biden is aiding and abetting illegal entry. Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who's been locked in a years-long fight with the federal government over border security, last year signed what's known as the SB4 law amid the historic increase in migrant border crossings. Today, can we give a, a round of applause to, to Professor X? Shout out to Meals on Wheels, Professor X, Governor Greg Abbott is down there doing the Lord's work, standing up to the administration. Shout out to Professor X. He called the Supreme Court's ruling a positive development. The White House sought to block the law and today said it's another example of Republican officials politicizing the border while blocking real solutions. It what, is that? Hey, what does that mean? Politicizing the border while blocking real solutions. What does that mean? Okay, so Texas, because the Biden administration refuses to enforce the laws that's already on the books that requires the federal government to patrol our borders and to remove people that are crossing over here illegally, decided that they had to create something to prevent people from coming over into the, into the state of Texas illegally, which was absolutely overwhelming what was going on there. And so they created SB4, which basically allowed for them to be able to arrest people that come over here illegally and send them back to wherever it is that they crossed over from. Nobody is slapping nobody in the face. Nobody kicking anybody in the butt. You come over here illegally, you go back the way you came from. We're not dealing with this nonsense. We're going to arrest you. Okay, cool. Then the White House, again, Karen Jean-Pierre, who I think is the black black chick with the squiggly hair that be on the White House breath, uh, press briefings says they release a statement on behalf of the Biden administration and it says listen this law that does not allow for people to continue to cross over here illegally is just another example of Republicans officials uh, politicizing the border what while blocking real solutions so it's not a real solution to prevent people from coming over here illegally Got it, okay. They called on Congress to pass a bipartisan border security plan currently being blocked in the House. The Supreme Court allowed the new law to take effect, but it still faces a challenge in a lower federal court. Today, conservative justices Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett urged the appeals court to rule quickly. Liberal justices Sonia Sotomayor and Katanji Brown Jackson questioned the law's constitutionality and said it will upend the long-standing federal state balance of power and sow chaos. Multiple law enforcement officials tell CBS News they're already short-staffed and don't have the training from the state on how to enforce the law. It's not like, oh, he looks illegal and we're going to put him in jail. We can't do that. You know, we can't uh, stereotype someone, you know, someone from Mexico and, and do that. And that potential for racial profiling across Texas is hey, look at that. Did y'all see that? Do that. Did y'all see that? Do you see him walking while illegals don't even... They don't even, like, I remember when I used to watch documentaries back in the day, because I'm a documentary guy. And I used to watch documentaries, and they used to have to, like, dodge the Border Patrol and sneak in because they was afraid they was going to get caught or whatever. They don't even do that no more. They just walk in broad daylight. They be like, what up, though? <laughs> oh, y'all got guns? Ah, don't worry about it. We got Fenty. Y'all got guns? Don't worry about it as soon, soon as I get home. Soon as I get home. Singing John Legend. Night's the best day ever. Tonight's best I ever had. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but I'll be the best you ever. Hey, listen, y'all ain't even got to go and get y'all passports anymore. Passports is they coming over here. Ladies, ladies, they coming over here. They coming for y'all. Y'all can go ahead and get y'all uh, no green cards, no none of that. Because you know what? Green cards are making it a lot more difficult. If you get married to somebody with a green card, you then become responsible for them if, if y'all decide to get divorced within a specific period of time. 
But y'all could just get y'all some straight on Mexico. Get y'all a little Jamaican. Jamaica me crazy. Have them come over here. Skip on over into the border. Act like they're Haitian. Come on right in. Go on TikTok. Find out where the cross is. And they're going to be the best I ever had. I don't want to brag. <laughs> but I'll be. <laughs> Two nights the night I. Yeah. Potential for racial profiling across Texas is what concerns migrant activists like Dylan Corbett. It's not just against recently arriving migrants, migrants who are coming to the border today, but this, this really goes after Texans throughout the state. Ed O'Keefe joins me now from Las Vegas. Ed, Mexico says the law in Texas is both anti-immigrant and says they won't accept migrants uh, that Texas officials try to deport. So does this now put a diplomatic problem in the President Biden's lap? It would, and, and there already really was, John, for the last year, Biden administration officials have been shuttling back and forth to Mexico City to try to convince Mexican officials to help them stop migrants from getting to the Texas or the Arizona borders. In this case now, they'll likely have a few more phone calls Biden. about this. And remember, Walking like a mannequin. This look at the Manchurian candidate. Hey, look at the Manchurian candidate. Knees bad. Ankles bad, hips bad, memory bad, bad breath, bad teeth, bad hairpiece, bad sun. <laughs> just, just bad. Everything is bad. Look. In this case, now they'll likely have a few like more a phone mannequin. calls about this. And remember, this go has been buy a big in. political issue go on in. this side go of the border. Mexico in. itself go is having in. a presidential go election in, in June. Don't you trip forward, sir. <laughs> he walking as though the wind is blowing towards him. And so he walking at a slant. Don't let that wind stop blowing. He going over. Go Biden. Go Biden. It's now they'll likely have a few more phone calls about this. And remember, this has been a big political issue on this Go side Biden. of the border. Mexico itself. Man, that's a general dynamics robot. That's not even a real person no more. <laughs> that's a general dynamics robot. <laughs> That is a general dynamics robot, boy. I'm telling you, man. Is having a presidential election in June, so undoubtedly it's going to fuel their politics as well. Speaking of the election, uh, presidential campaign, the president uh, is in Vegas, giving uh, talking about his economic policies. Uh, what, what, what's his pitch? Yeah, he, he made a stop first in Reno this morning to open a campaign office, then came here to Las Vegas to talk about housing specifically. He's got is, billions sister. of dollars of budget requests to try to ease the housing crunch and help Americans across the country try to find a home if they can't already or at least be able to afford one. They came here to Nevada to talk about this because it's a, an acute part of the problem and the strain on the economy in this state where things are lagging behind the... Listen, we don't need to need to hear any more of this. We know what's going on. They're replacing y'all. They're giving them guns. They're giving them jobs, giving them opportunities, giving them health care, education, teaching them English. And they letting y'all skip the 90 Day Fiance. Y'all the ones that keep complaining about the fact that y'all got to deal with all of these modern men. Well, there you go. You got a whole bunch of migrant men. <laughs> I'm going to get the stream sniped again if I keep roasting Biden. Pass a love offering, says Jamal Fowler. Thank you, Jamal. I appreciate you for holding me down, big dog. Well, Building Journey says, do a side-by-side -side of her and uh, Wart. No, no, no. No, no, no. Go Norbit. Go Norbit. Jada Legend Sports Media says, squatters only have rights in Jersey after living in a property for 30 years straight. If not, they can get shot or arrested according to New Jersey law. Hmm. I didn't know that. Shout out to my people over in... uh. Newark. I got some people over in Newark. Elaine Burris says, Anton, a higher court overturned a ruling yesterday, and Ken Paxson is in the front of the Supreme Court today to have it reenacted. Biden administration hates we the people. Shout out to Elaine keeping us up to date. You know I'm going to cover it tomorrow. Uh, Victor Williams says, we have to be in a simulation. This is absolutely ridiculous. And you clowns voted for this, but orange man bad. What if we all was really in the Matrix? What if none of this was real and we was all really in the Matrix? What if that was really a thing? My dog missed a lot. 
Biden was replaced with a robot designed by NVIDIA. And we invested, so we're going to make a lot of money out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. We'll turn on your notifications. Let's get into the news, y'all. Let's get more into it. So AOC. Now, a lot of y'all remember the review of the video I did of AOC a few weeks ago where she was basically advocating for immigration and migration into this country. And she said, listen, guys, we should be embracing the fact that all of these illegal migrants are coming into this country because, shout out to Mika, because they are the ones that benefit us the most and they generate the most wealth and they're the ones that make more millionaires than Jay-Z. Make more millionaires than the lotto did. They made millions, just made millions. Leo made millions. Beans would tell you if he wasn't in his feelings. <laughs> she said that migrants make more millionaires than the lotto did and Jay-Z. Well, people are sick of it. They're absolutely, positively sick of it. How did y'all vote in a waitress? How did, I, see, I don't, I don't forget. I don't forget, how did y'all vote in a waitress based off of identity politics? We're here in AOC's neighborhood where people are pretty fired up about it being like a third world country. They're complaining about prostitutes roaming the streets. They're complaining about illegal street vendors. So we're gonna go ask people. Hey, shout out to the jazz players that's out there making it happen. The blues players that's over here playing the instruments that's on this live stream. Who decided to put some music to this? Who are these editors that work for these large companies? I'm just curious. How bad is it here? Do you see your Congresswoman AOC a lot in this neighborhood? I don't. So how often do you see AOC in this neighborhood? Uh, not much. AOC wants to help the people and goes and hides. She's a liar. Have you noticed a lot more illegal vendors on the streets? Absolutely, yes. It's been a normal for many years. Many, many, many years. They're crowding the street and people cannot walk or go past by them. It's visual, everybody sees it, but nothing's been done. Prostitution and everything is going on in this area. In this area? Oh, no, not the girl with the cat, cat coat on, the cat fur coat on. What is that, rabbit? Is that ostrich? What is this, liver? Not a chick just standing out there getting her a John right then and there. Why they okay? Wait, 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 wait. Why are they covering their face? Why do we? Why do we cover the people's faces that do stuff illegally? That's just what I'm saying. You got this woman over there. She got her uh, band band camp on. You know, <laughs> this is so bad. This is so bad. In this is yes. And nobody does anything about nothing, it. Nothing. Nothing. I would like to see all of D.C. provide more support to the cities that are dealing with the migrant influxes. Does it seem like in some ways and on some days, this is like a third world? Hello? These robocalls is getting out of hand, yo. World country. It's sad to say, but it's slowly getting there. It's slowly getting there. And look, that's what we were able to see around 8 a.m. in the morning on a very cold morning. So imagine look at that. That. Neighbor that looked crazy. That looked like uh, Philly. That looked like Philly. That looked like Kensington Ave. That looks just like Queens, New York, look like Kensington Ave over in Philly. Can I ask y'all a question? What have y'all legislators done for y'all? What have y'all legislators done for you guys lately? When you think about opportunities, economic empowerment, diversity, equity, inclusion, migrant crisis, drugs on the street, cops being... What, what, have, what has your country done for y'all lately? I think that a lot of people are 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 absolutely 
have the wrong impression of here in the United States of America. I get there in a minute. Give me a second. What it looks like on nights, weekends, when it's warm out, when there are Look people out. We're following the story all morning illegal. on Fox. You ain't used to be able to just sell illegal persons on the street. Friends, Rachel Campos Duffy was also in that neighborhood, spoke Spanish to some of the locals. That Obviously, I don't speak Spanish very well, so I couldn't communicate. You're going to want to stick around for that. Um, it's an important story. We need to be able, because there's so many people in this neighborhood that are legal immigrants doing it the right way, and the stuff that they need to deal with to suffer through just to have their slice of the American dream. Let's back up for a minute. Let's back up for a minute. Let's let's see what the people are saying. Because the constituents is is just absolutely incensed about what's going on over here in uh New York. Earlier this week, we showed you this shocking video of migrants setting up an unauthorized flea market right there on the streets of New York City. Well, Fox and Friends baby. Weekend co-host Rachel Campos Duffy hit those same streets to talk with Queens residents and business owners about the impact of those vendors. What is up with all of this extra music that they got going on over here? Vendors are out. We're going to talk to some of the residents to see how this area is changing. There's so much immigration now. There's so many Venezuelans, Ecuadorians, Mexicans that crossed over, you know, due to Biden. Are you seeing crime? More crime? crime? Yeah, more crime. There's more crime going on. Robberies, a lot of crackers. After 7 p.m., you cannot walk around here. In the corner, mm. every, like, a week. You, you heard like somebody was killed, somebody was like beaten. I feel very unsafe, truly. I've had three times someone tried to assault me. She said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the Macarena. That's what I heard. I ain't hear nothing about no assault. She said, I'm gonna do the Macarena. Hey, Macarena. Aye. I feel very unsafe, truly. I've had three times. I feel very unsafe, truly. I've had. Hey, Macarena. Aye. That's what I heard. Hey, Macarena. I need to brush up on my Spanish. I feel very unsafe, truly. I've had. What did y'all hear? <laughs> oh, snaps. I got a Spanish liaison in the in the chat. I heard. That's what I heard. I don't know how y'all just be over here and y'all don't know English. How do y'all not know English? No, no, I blow English. God dang. Three times someone tried to assault me, tried to pull my, my gold chain. I'm always with him and protecting him saying? because the crime is so bad. You, know, the, you see all the vendors, all the people selling stuff on the street. There's crimes, people getting robbed. A lot of people doesn't want to come because they come with their families and they see that. But, uh, no. We see them around, but nobody does anything. We have a lot of closed doors, a lot of businesses that are just closing uh, every single day because they can't compete with the prices of that the street vendors outside are, are giving. Because they stealing, y'all. That's the key. So they keep talking about they can't compete with the prices of the, of the street vendor. Well, yeah, it's much easier. And see, this is why migration, illegal immigration is so bad. Because what happens is they get that five-finger discount. And then when they get the five, the five finger discount, what happens is it's impossible for you to compete because you got to buy and sell. You got to pay taxes. You got to do payroll taxes. And then the federal government is going to take a percentage of everything that you make. You got to pay all of this stuff. You got to buy and sell your stuff when they could just go out, steal their stuff, sell it for half price, undercut you. And what do you think going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? All of the research and development, all of this stuff to, to make it safe or whatever. If they getting it for free and they can sell it for half price and they and they making a hundred percent profit, how do you think that that's going to start to impact you? Everyone has your business suffered at all? Tiene miedo de salir a la calle tan tarde. She said, she yeah. said the same thing. Hey, no, 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 no,
Our business has been affected. Todo el mundo está cerrando temprano por la situación. Now everyone goes home early, closes early because of the crime situation. Inmigrantes buenos, somos más generosos. She said, we um, take pride in our place, we work really hard, we are immigrants who came here for the right reasons to work, and we just wish that those who aren't complying with the law would be held accountable. Okay. This is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's district. What would you say to her if she was here right now? ¿Qué le dirías a ella? Su trabajo de, de cuidar el, el, el vecindario. We would ask her to do her job of taking care of this neighborhood to do a better job. She should come and walk around here and see all, everything, all the garbage, all the people, people getting robbed, they're doing daytime and nighttime. Entonces me sería muy, muy... We wish she would do something better here. Vuelto por aquí. She is never... Vuelto por aquí. Mete por aquí, mete por aquí, ay, ay, mete por aquí, mete por aquí, mete por aquí, ay, ay. Here. I was a volunteer for her. She completely abandoned our community. Shout out to uh, AOC out here doing the Lord's work of continuing to ruin the community so that we can come in and clean up, gentrify it, make it cheaper, and then continue to run up that bag. We appreciate you. Shout out to the news for giving us such great music in order for us to get our day started with and dance with. Ooh. Hey, Macarena, Macarena, Macarena. Let me read some of these super chats and then we gonna get it. We gonna get it. We gonna get it. We got a lot that we still need to cover. Shout out to Mika. Mika says, I'm Cuban. Cubato. Says, but right Mexican on everything now. Hey, you gonna get a lot of benefits as a result of that. I said Aki, right? Okay, all right, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Shout out to my Mexican translator. Shout out to my Mexican translator, uh, Mika. I got my uh, dog, Casey, professional DJ services. DJ services, said, and events. Shout out to you for the two ball. I appreciate you, big dog. Uh, also, on top of that, King Stennis says, over and under that they don't change their voting habits. So we know that black people is going to do what they're going to do regardless of whatever it is that is being communicated because they want to. They want to vote for whoever, you know, who's worse for them. Anton, these dudes don't go, go to the DR for women. They go to the Bronx. I don't know why y'all think the Dominican Republic, the Dominican, the Dominican Republic is so awesome. I'm still confused. I went and I was like, eh. Look like the same type of chicks that I see back home. They have butterfly eyelashes, and they look the same as all of the rest of the chicks. King Stennis says, I can't, I can confirm that area remind me of downtown Tulum. Tulum. Darnell was in the building and says, Anton, it looks just like this. I drove by this area on Monday. The tricks go over there for a good time and cheap food. They call it Candleland. Candleland. You're talking about like on Django Unchained? Candleland. Welcome to Candleland. I think I'm going to open up a spot that say that. Y'all ready to continue on with the show? Let's get serious. Mm. Almost dropped my uh, chapstick. Let's get serious. Mm. A Boeing whistleblower. A Boeing whistleblower whistleblower now uh, hold on one second let me show you this his name is john barnett and they're saying that he was found dead apparently from a suicide <laughs> we know better but listen they saying that it was a suspicious suicide a suspicious suicide, according to the BBC. And here, let me share my screen with you guys before we get into the video. Well, I'll just show you the video and then I'll show you the timeline of the events. And then you guys can decide for yourself. Make sure you hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, uh, and turn on your notifications. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to show that video yet. <laughs> All right. I don't want to show that video yet. All right. Let's go with this one. 
Tonight, we are learning more about events surrounding the death of the Boeing whistleblower, John Barnett. Barnett was found dead in his truck in a Holiday Inn parking lot just off of Savannah Highway. Preliminary reports from the Charleston County Coroner's Office are that his death appears to be from a self-inflicted wound. However, that has not quelled the public attention over his death. For years, Barnett said publicly he was retaliated against the world by the world's largest aerospace company because he blew the whistle on unsafe practices. Our investigative reporter Ann Emerson has been talking to sources familiar with the story today. And what are you learning about Barnett's death? Well, right now we're trying to nail down the timeline of John Burnett's death and the last time anyone saw or heard from him alive. Take a look at this timeline. The hotel staff told police John Barnett checked into room 511 at the hotel on March 2nd. Barnett's lawyer tells me he sat down for his deposition with Boeing's lawyers on Thursday the 7th. It was the start of a months long deposition process ahead of the June trial. March 8th, Barnett puts his complaints of a hostile work environment at Boeing on the record with his lawyers, but he grows tired of the questioning and leaves a little early. The idea was they would resume the next morning. His lawyer, Rob Turkowitz, tells me he spoke to his client for the last time around 6 p.m. Friday night. Saturday, March 9th, the weather is terrible. Huge storms inundate this area. 924 AM, a hotel staff member said they heard a pop near where Barnett's car was parked, but thought nothing of it. Turkowitz called the hotel when Barnett fails to show up for the deposition around 10 AM. So you hear a pop, AKA a gunshot. You hear a gunshot and you didn't think nothing of it. Ah! Not a big deal. You know what? I'm not even going to go and check. I don't see what's happening. Now, listen, every single other situation, and I'm not saying that anybody did anything to him. I'm just going to point out the obvious. I'm going to be Captain Obvious right now. Every other situation that we've ever reviewed on the Millionaire Morning Show, we just seen a guy, the sub with the 27 year old woman that got killed at Subway. The, the fourth suspect, the bus stop shooter, they found out who that guy was and what his name was immediately. You can't blink. You can't even run a red light without it being a camera. Listen, next time y'all stand, y'all go to a red light in a main intersection, look up. The next, next time that you see a, that you stop at a red light and you at a main thoroughfare or intersection, don't matter what city you in, it don't matter if you're in Detroit, Milwaukee, Chicago, Los Angeles, Oakland, New York, San Francisco, San Diego, Miami, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, Alabama, South Carolina, Raleigh, no matter where you are, look up for every single intersection. It's a thousand cameras all around you. They're able to find out who's actually in your location based off of geofencing and you can't even fly a, trust me, I had drones. Do you know you can't fly a drone in certain places because they automatically got geofencing based off of safety and equipment and technicalities and every bus, every building. Listen, my building, my building has so many cameras in it and security precautions and it's cameras that's outside. Bro, I caught the people mover into the in, in here today. I walked across the street before I got up through the elevator and then got up to the top, top thing, walked up the steps got up to the top thing in order for me to get on the people mover before I even got close to the yellow line that they say, hey, don't come close to this. Don't go over this yellow line because the train comes over here. The guy was already on the thing watching me on the camera. Oh, I'm sorry, Anton Daniels. Move over. I just started laughing. I said, man, how you know my name? Uh, we see you all the time, Mr. Daniels. Then I got on the people mover and it was cameras all over the place. Every single stop that you make, right? And then uh, shout out to the news guy. I seen a news guy get on the camera. He said, hey, man, a young news guy. I think it was like Channel 7 here in Detroit or something. Hey, man, what's going on, Anton? So I waved at him, and we, you know, had a couple words as I was getting off. And I, every single place that you go on, camera, 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 camera everywhere. Surveillance everywhere. But don't nobody know nothing. Everybody is oblivious. Sand at a hotel. Don't know where he at. Just so happened to get in this car. And it was a pop. Nobody thought about anything. Okay, okay. This is the timeline, y'all. Talk to his lawyer. 
went to his car, called, blew the whistle, told about unsafe practices at the at the largest manufacturing of aerospace equipment in the entire world, and then nothing happened. Okay. Hotel staff locate Barnett in his car with a gun still in his hand, and what they say was a note on the passenger seat. We did not have any indication that he was under tremendous stress to the point where he would, you know, take his own life. Well, right now we are waiting for the Charleston Police Department to finish the investigation into Bar He wrote a note, left it on his lap. What did the note say? <laughs> Barnett's death. They are the lead agency and have yet to ask for any assistance. Part of the evidence will include the coroner's report and whether this was indeed a suicide. Coming up at 7, we're going to take a closer look. So let's go into his family. His family spoke and said, uh, apparently he was saying, if anything happens to me, I didn't kill myself. I know that he did not commit suicide. There's no way. First tonight, our investigative reporter Ann Emerson has new information in the death of Boeing whistleblower John Barnett. A close family friend of Barnett says he predicted he might wind up dead, that a story could surface that he killed himself. But he told her, don't believe it. And I don't know how, how listen, I'm just reacting to the news stories. The close friend, one of his close family friends, said listen he they say that he said hey listen the type of information that i'm giving out here it's a lot of money that's about to be messed up because you know the safety of the people is at risk here and i'm telling you this is what the family friend is saying i'm telling you if anything happens to me i am not suicidal i did not hurt myself that's what the family friend said Tessa, Barnett's family friend Jennifer said they had talked about this exact scenario playing out, but his words seemed like a premonition. He told her, don't ever believe it. I knew John because his mom and my mom are best friends. And so over the years, uh, get togethers, uh, birthdays, celebrations, and you know, whatnot, we've all got together and talked and, you know, uh, that's how we really know each other. And when Jennifer needed help one day, Barnett came by to see her. They talked about his upcoming depositions in Charleston. Jennifer knew he filed an extremely damaging complaint against Boeing. He says the aerospace giant retaliated against him when he blew the whistle on unsafe practices. For more than 30 years, Barnett was a quality manager. He'd recently retired and moved back to look after his mom in Louisiana. He wasn't concerned about safety because I asked him, I said, aren't you scared? And he said, and his voice and his, the way he would talk, uh, no, I ain't scared. Um, he said, but if anything happens to me, it's not suicide. You know, I know that he did not commit suicide. There's no way. He loved life too much. He loved his family too much. He loved his brothers too much to to put them through what they're going through right now. And he basically told you not to believe it. Yeah, basically, yeah. Not true, he's got too much to do, likes breathing. <laughs> and he did, he had a lot of plans and things that he wanted to do. What do you but he just woke up one day after a dis uh, deposition with his lawyer in a, from a hotel room that he planned on staying in for about a month. And he just decided to write a note and go ahead and take his own self. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'm just I'm just curious. What do y'all think about this? Do y'all think that this man actually took his own off himself? Or do you think that this is all all something else? What do you think happened? I think somebody got in there and made, uh, you know, money can buy anything nowadays, it seems Not like. That right. And there's a lot of evil in this world. I think uh, somebody uh, didn't like what he had to say and wanted to shut him up and uh, didn't want it to come back on uh, anyone. So that's why they made it look like a suicide. The last time she saw Barnett, it was at her father's funeral in late February. He was one of the pallbearers.
Sometimes family and friends referred to him by his middle name, Mitch. I think everybody is in disbelief and can't believe it. And I, don't, I told everybody that I don't care what they say, I know that Mitch didn't do that. What do y'all think? I just wanted to introduce y'all because a lot of y'all may not necessarily be familiar about what's going on out in these streets. And listen, it's a lot of money on the table. It's a lot of money on the table. It's a lot of money on the table. What do y'all think? Let me read some of these super chats and then we're going to get over it to the last part of the show. Prince Elian says there were 700,000 people in AOC's district in 2018. Uh, she won with only 16,000 votes. That's because y'all don't vote. Local voting matters and not voting hurts more than folks realize. And this is why y'all keep getting people bullying y'all and telling y'all what y'all going to do in your own district. King Stennis says... Why these people don't just do a uh, just don't do a just in case videos voice note or something? And then what is that gonna do? What is that gonna do? Hey man, I wouldn't do this to myself. <sighs> hey, he must have had a change of heart. That don't mean nothing. Mister Law says, watch the cameras and look for the bald guy in the suit, <laughs> or what a what a PLGQ hat on. People love good quality. Shout out to people love good quality. I appreciate you, big dog, for sending me my gear. This is also a people love good quality hoodie. I do not I do not get anything from it. Uh, if y'all want this stuff, then go to people love good quality. You got discounts on stuff. Uh, you got the bear, got the hoodie, got the hats, got everything. You can even pretend to be a MAGA person and rock with the red one. You know what I'm saying? So, deciding I want to show some love to the people out here in these streets, man. Y'all know we got Wednesday night too, right? I know we got Wednesday night tonight. I think I might go to the basketball game, take a load off, yell while I'm on TV. Y'all want me to be yelling on TV? Hey, man. At the Pistons game tonight. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, ref, you got to you gotta stop doing this to us, ref. I think I'm going to be yelling on TV tonight. If y'all want to see Time Dog on TV, I promise you I'm going to put on a show. Hey, ref, what are they doing? Oh, you got to stop doing this to me. You're taking us out the game. I got a lot of money on the game, ref. What is what is going on? I feel like he's trying to throw the game. Somebody get him over here, referee. I'm thinking about if I go, I'm going to make the news tonight. <laughs> if I go to the game, I'm definitely going to make the news tonight. I'm going to be the fifth coach on the, on the, on the sideline. I might even switch my seats and, and, and sit on the side of the players tonight. Usually I like to sit on the other side where, um, you know, it's not to where I don't like the camera on me. I don't want y'all to be seeing who I'm with all day long and all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I like to have a little bit of privacy for myself. But tonight I might sit on the other side and be the, be the fifth coach. Hey, ref, what you doing? You got to get, gotta get him going. I'm going to put on a show tonight. I'm going to put on a show tonight. Let's go, bitch, that. Let's go, bitch. No, y'all want me? Okay. All right. We'll get there. We'll get there. Shout out to J Dubs. Uh, hold on. Before we get into the Donnie Don Don, J Dubs, because I was going to do this last night. I decided to save it for the Millionaire Morning Show. Uh, thank you, Dame Smith, for the dope show. Uh, J Dubs says this is similar to the people who go against Putin. They all fall out of a window or something, or they trip over themselves and, and fall into a pencil into their eye. <sighs> The pencil just so happened to be sticking up. The fencing just so happened to be pointing that, that way. And they tripped and they fell into a, a, a sharp part of the fence that just poked their whole brain out of their soul. But like, when I was little, my grandma told me to pray against freak accidents. Rebuke accidents, incidents, trouble, run-ins with the... <laughs> the <laughs> Do y'all know that that was some of the prayers back in the day for me? I still remember it like it was yesterday. Rebuke accidents, incidents, runnings with the police, tickets, problems, and trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. That was the prayer. That was part of the prayer. Rebuke accidents, incidents, problems, and trouble, runnings with the police. Uh, keep us safe, Lord. Don't let us get pulled over. In Jesus' name. Next thing you know, I'll be like, woo, like God. I forgot to say in Jesus' name. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Shout out to J Dubs in the building. I appreciate you. Back for back says. Back for back says the FAA just resealed uh, a story saying a lubricant bolts with a Dawn dish soap. Dish soap, really? Let me stop talking about Boeing for they <laughs> to come visit. You know what I'm saying? I don't want him climbing up my my building talking about the window just so having to bust out and Anton flew out the window. Shout out to Time Out. Yeah, shout out to Time Out. I appreciate you, big dog. Y'all ready to continue to uh y'all ready to continue over with the show? So Donnie Don Don, I happen to think that Don Lemon is one of the corniest men on the face of the earth. I don't even believe that Don Lemon really talks like this, but I think that he's He's 100% on code 100% of the time. I think that Don Lemon, even his name is corny. I don't, I don't like to shame men. I don't like to say you can't unlame a lame, but because I don't like to la label people lames just because people don't like people. And I started to do this story last night, but I was just too tired. I said, I'm not about to talk about Don. Not, not, not at 1 o'clock in the morning. Not at 1 something in the morning. Jesus, take the wheel. But Don Lemon decided that he wanted to do a, an interview with Elon Musk, and so I'm going to skim through it. I am not suicidal. Anton Daniels is not suicidal. I love my life. I love myself. I love my daughter. I love my wife. I love my bag chasers. I love my Patreon. I love my, uh, my Millionaire Morning Show constituents. I love my audience. I love my people. I think that Don Lemon is quite possibly one of the corniest people that I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm going to read that in one second, Chris James. I, I have not watched this interview. I have not seen any part of it outside of him complaining to CNN that Elon Musk canceled him. But let's get into it. Let's see if we can skim through any of this and see what's happening. Even the music is corny. Still here. In a minute, I'm going to bring... Welcome to the Don Lemon Show, everyone. We're still here. In a minute, I'm going to bring you my conversation with Elon Musk, the one that everyone is talking about. But first... <sighs> this guy is so lame to me. So lame to me. You know, ladies, I'm just curious. Would y'all talk to Don Lemon? I just want to know, do y'all find Don Lemon to be, oh man, that's a high value man I would love to be in a relationship with. Let me play some of this. First, let me tell you a bit about the show. Contrary to what you might have heard, we weren't canceled by X. Sir, play the interview. We don't want to hear your explanations. Yes, after months of begging me, wooing me to offer some exclusive content on his platform, Elon Musk decided to scrap the deal. Hold on, hold but on, our look plan at is, and always Look at this sassy... Look at this. You said it right, Charles Palmer. Palmer, this sassy dweeb. This sa that's that's what he is. He's a sassy dweeb. Listen to what he's saying to even preface this. Maybe we won't even get to the interview. Maybe we just gonna review. Apparently, this uh, public service announcement before he drops the interview because he's still whining and complaining. Listen to what he's saying. Platform. Elon Musk months of begging me, wooing me to offer some. Might have heard we weren't canceled by X. Yes, after months of begging me, wooing me to offer some exclusive content on his platform, Elon Musk decided to scrap the deal. After months of begging me. After months of begging me. I've never said this a day in my life. I've never said this a day in my life, but if, if in any situation that I've ever heard a woman say who hurt you could apply, this could possibly be it all right i'm not gonna say that he's a sassy dweeb i'm just gonna listen to it i'm gonna review it <laughs> Elon, the richest man in the world was begging you he didn't beg tucker carlson but he begged you okay but our plan is and always has been to release this show everywhere on youtube on spotify on iHeartRadio, just about any place you stream content now for my conversation with elon as with all my interviews, no restrictions, no ground rules, nothing off limits or out of bounds. That is until the interview ended. So what went wrong? I don't know. 
But my hope is that you learn something about both Elon and me, two people who come from completely different vantage points on almost every single issue. Why and did he I get fired from you, CNN Elon, again? To watch the whole interview and tell the world why this isn't what you claim you want on X. Thank you for inviting us here. You're welcome. Your Tesla headquarters, I, it's, I'm surprised at how big it is. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's about oh. three times the size of the Pentagon. Yeah. And we're both in in 16 months. It's the fastest construction project in the United States since... Uh, hey, stop it with all of the, the noises and the extra... That's not sweet. That's not sweet. So, so I'm here, you know, as you know, I'm on the platform because you are... You say you're a free speech absolutist, right? And there are no conditions. Uh, yeah. Free speech is uh, as, as much as possible within the bounds of the law. Yeah. So... Uh, I, the reason I'm saying that is because there are no conditions on this interview. You said that, you know, we'll speak to you for an hour. I don't like sound bites, so I welcome that. So let's get yeah. into it. So we're here in Austin. South by Southwest uh, is going on. We're at the Tesla headquarters. You are in the process of moving SpaceX here, I understand? No. Uh, so uh, SpaceX has a, a massive uh, facility in South Texas where we build and launch Starship. And then we, we have... Um, in Bastrop near uh, Austin, we uh, are about to start production at a, a Starlink, uh, a large Starlink factory for Starlink terminals. But it's uh, but, but we're not shutting down any facilities in California. Um, listen, we are here as part of a launch of a news interview show that is going to be on X.com. Uh, it's coming as a media industry, as you know, is going through a whole lot of changes. Yeah. X has also been affected by that. Where do you see X.com? Why didn't he say, <laughs> why didn't he say that it's going to be on X and all of the platforms in front of Elon? How come he didn't say that? Why, why is he now just so having to say, oh man, but we plan on releasing it on every other platform. ...role in the future of news and journalism, Elon. Well, I, I think the, I see the, the X as... Uh, it's it's already the number one source of news uh, in the world. So it is number one, yeah, uh, the number one way that people actually are informed about any kind of news, meaning real time events, is uh, on the X platform, formerly Twitter. Um, there's there's nothing even close for real time news. So um, we also want to expand upon that, um, and we we have done so with uh, long form content. So instead of just doing what these people tweets, you can now do long form posts. You can post an entire essay. In fact, you can now uh, put an entire book, post an entire book to the platform. Um, you can do long form video content. Uh, so you can do uh, up to four hour video so segments. He, so he wanted um, to do. We really want news in whatever form it is, or information, I should say, in whatever form it is, to be available on our platform. Whether you want to be the end long, all be all. Text pictures, video, whatever the case may be. Yeah, and some of the stuff that we do, long form video, interview shows, or what, what have you. Yeah. You, um, you reached out over the summer and you said, it would be great to have Matto, Don Lemon, others on the left put on this uh, platform. You receive full support. The Digital Town Square is for all. What do you mean by that? Well, I just mean that uh, we want to make sure that there are a wide variety of viewpoints, that it's uh, you know, we always have, for example, Tuck Carlson, who uh, most people will view as being on the right. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a quite, a, quite a prominent uh, name on the right. We want to have uh, prominent names on the left as well uh, to provide uh, different views of points of view, uh, as well as centrists. Just basically a wide range of, of viewpoints on the platform so users can uh, hear different opinions. Uh, you know, How is that begging? Hear, no. You know, what is, what's your point of view? What's Tucker's point of view? And make the... And, you know, and people can make their own decision about what, what they what they believe. You didn't mean that I'm on the left? Did you think that? I thought you were on the left, but yeah. I don't know. I'm used to, yeah. well, let's just say, I don't know what the left is or the right is, frankly, these days, because things can be quite polarized. But you seem, my impression was that you're, uh, you're, you're, you're be more likely to be described as on the left than the right. Uh, well, he got timestamps on my, this? My sense is you're sort of center left. No, I don't know, you told me. Sense. Well. Did you ever watch me on CNN, or did you watch? I saw me? I saw seg se yeah yeah not I saw, I saw segments yeah but CNN is generally considered left yeah why do you say that what, why do I say CNN is generally considered left uh, I think 
if, if you look at any sort of media survey of what is on the left or right, I think they would say, like, for example, Fox is on the right and CNN is on the left. Yeah. So that's what is it? Am I missing something here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you missing something? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that when, you, when, when I read that, I said, like many uh, of my critics or detractors, they never really watched me on CNN. They just saw the clips of me either on social media or maybe on Fox News or a conservative media, yeah. where it's sort of a, where I've become a character or a caricature of what I actually am and it's taken out of context. Uh, sure. Well, how would you describe yourself? Um, I would describe myself as someone who is, I, I, I am independent in my thinking okay. and I vote for people based on the issues and how I feel about it, not necessarily because uh, of uh, political leaning of some sort. Well, I agree with that approach. I think that's generally how, yeah. how people should uh, Shout yeah, out to Frank things, White. Is, I mean, there's, there's, there are a whole sort of set of issues which are sort of somewhat arbitrarily bucketed into right or left. Yeah. Um, but I think most, like most citizens, uh, the right, not every time. Yes. Even Prince went back to Prince instead of, is it always going to be X? It's definitely always going to be X. So X is going through some changes. Is it a lot um, of, of media companies are going through some changes? It's it, you're in charge of an incredible platform, Elon. How do you feel that's going? I think it's going pretty well so far. Um, we're seeing record usage. Um, we've added a tremendous amount of functionality. I mentioned the uh, uh, that you know it used to be that you could only, um, but now you can do long form text, long text DMs. You can do order and. Um, Let's talk about that because you said you wanted all points of view, right? It's, it's a digital town square for all. Yeah. It's the, the, the platform has kind of picked up where conservative media, some conservative media has left off, um, that moving to the right, increasingly becoming part of a conservative dialogue, sometimes even conspiracy theories, right? There was an article recently How? written about you saying that you, Donald Trump, and X were the most important um, people uh, or places or whatever icons when it comes to the MAGA movement. Do you agree with that? How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I mean, there are nonsense articles written all the time, and I certainly wouldn't agree with that one. I put it in the nonsense category. So uh, the, 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 the objective fact of the matter, in my opinion, was that, um, that old Twitter was a, a fundamentally a, tw a tool of the, the far left. As far, and that was uh, really, I think, a lot of it was due to being located in San Francisco, Berkeley. Um, and so uh, it wanted to essentially project the SF Berkeley uh, political dogma worldwide. Do you um, think it was far left? Absolutely. Yes, I, I, I used to get, I actually got <laughs> off the platform because I would get so much hate tweets when it, it was called in, so much hate tweets and, and just guff from right-wing conspiracy theorists being called everything from, you know, fag to... Sure. Well, it's the, it's the internet, everything. you know, that people will do. I mean, I've been called every name times a thousand. Yeah. Do you agree that it's right now and that even no. it's moved into sort of MAGA land no, I, I don't, theory? I certainly don't think it's right. Um, the, the old school Twitter uh, suspended and suppressed uh, accounts that you'd call on the right 10 times more than they did accounts on the left. And even when they did suspend an account on the left, uh, it was because of arguments between two people on the left. Uh, the political donations of old Twitter were 99% Democrat. Does that sound left, right, left wing or right wing to you? The Twitter donations? Yes. You yeah. know when they look at donations by, from a company? If a company donates nine, literally 99% of all donations are to Democrats, does that strike you as a left-leaning or a right-leaning Oh, you company? mean the company donated. I understand what you're and saying. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, Twitter employees, people at Twitter, their political donations ha were 99%, literally 99% uh, to Democrats. That's obviously an extremely left-leaning group. My question to leading into this is Astra said this dude is extremely weird and awkward. Yeah, you, you got to understand that a lot of people um, that are incredibly smart or or could be considered geniuses, a lot of times they call them awkward or they call them weird or they call them off and stuff like that. And it's because the way that they think is unconventional or the way that they see things may be unconventional and it may not necessarily be aligned with the fact that they can communicate their thoughts as, as clearly as they can see a solution for whatever it is that they think is, is meaningful um, for what they're trying to solve for. So uh, Connie says he is autistic. I don't know if he's autistic. I've never heard of that before. I've actually read a book about him. Um, I forgot what the name of the book is. I actually might have it in there. Let me see. 
about MAGA. You, and speaking of MAGA, you recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I was at a dinner, I, I was not done, I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by, that's it. So you didn't go there to meet him? I, no, I went to a, a, a friend of mine's house uh, and it said, it said Donald Trump's coming by for breakfast. Is that, uh, if, just so you know, like, okay, fine. What'd you discuss? I've, I don't, um, let's just say uh, I, he did most of the talking. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what did he... and, and the, the, the normal things he says, there was nothing particularly gr 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 groundbreaking or new, but uh, he, you know, uh, President Trump likes to talk. And so he talked. I, I, I don't recall him saying anything that he hasn't said publicly. Uh, and that was it, it was just a breakfast. Did he ask you for money? He didn't. Did he ask you for a donation? No. He didn't? No. You said you're not gonna donate to any candidate. That's correct. Why not? I think, uh, while I'll, I'll voice my opinion, um, I think uh, I don't want to. I don't want to put uh, a thumb it's on the scale here. monetarily. This is a very, that, very, uh, is, very boring you know, interview. Significant. I said it got weird to towards the end of the interview. Let's go to the end. Freedom of speech in America. The first amendment. Two different that the X platform will not. Okay. So, but you think it's, uh, you don't think it's okay for them not to advertise with or have their content or their very advertisement next to something that is anti-Semitic or... That is a different question. Uh, you, you, we, we, there's, there's, you can absolutely choose where, next to which content do you want your advertising to appear. Absolutely, of course. Mm -hmm. And we do, we have, I think, very good ad placement controls in this regard. Yeah. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on it. I have to say, I, I, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Okay, but so <laughs> is this the question you want to ask? The same question is. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If that's not a warning, I don't know what is. Hold on. He said, Don, I don't know what got to this point. Maybe I need to rewind it a little bit. He said, Don, choose your, careful, your questions carefully. You got five minutes, bro. <whistles> Don, choose your, careful, your questions carefully, big dog. You got five minutes left. Let me rewind this for a minute. Let me rewind it a little bit, see what's happening out here in these streets. The gender that, so why can't people choose to identify with the gender that they feel comfortable with or with a user pronoun? Isn't that part of freedom of expression? Uh, I guess no, they can, they can ask others to do whatever they feel. They can, they can ask others to do anything. What, it's a different question whether they, whether they mandate that others do that yeah. thing. That's correct. I agree with that. Let's, let's talk more about free speech and for advertisers, right? Because all, all this controversy, I, I believe, as you know, has made um, X less appealing to advertisers. About half of them have left the platform. You call advertisers that left X.com. Uh, you said they were oppressors. You've even gone as far as saying it publicly that they can go F themselves or go fuck themselves. Advertise if, if they're, they're going to force censorship on the, on the company uh, before advertising, then uh, obviously I find that unacceptable. You find it unacceptable. Why is that not a form no of, of free speech? They are free to advertise where they want. They're not beholden to, they're not yes. obligated to advertise not obligated. on the next.com. Right. So how is that not free speech? What? Wait, 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 wait. He's talking about the employees that left. We're saying, listen, we're not going to force censorship on people in order to be able to buck down to people for advertising dollars. I don't really understand where the, where the disagreement is. So wait, wait, wait. Don Lemon, just because you say, okay, we want people to have difference of, differences of opinions and different perspectives and stuff. I'm going to read the Super Chat shortly. Thank you all for people that continue to hold me down. It's like they being intentionally difficult. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to censor free speech in order to be able to make money on advertisements. That's not acceptable. I don't, I don't really know what the, di what the 
disagreement is. What is the disagreement? I don't I don't understand. What what are we missing here? The, they they that's whereas the other platforms will censor on behalf of, of advertisers, the X platform will not. Okay. So but you think it's uh, you don't think it's okay for them not to advertise with or pad their content or their advertisement next to something that is anti-Semitic or... That is a different question. Uh, you, you, we, we, there's, there's, you can absolutely choose where, next to which content do you want your advertising to appear. Absolutely, of course. Mm -hmm. And we do, we have, I think, very good ad placement controls in this regard. Yeah. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? What? I mean, you're on it. See, I see where it was. I see what happens. So what happened was he was trying to get some hot sound bites and he was trying to corner Elon Musk by continuing to ask him the question over and over in a different way to try to make it seem like Elon Musk was the bad guy when in reality he had already answered the question. He's not going to keep answering in different ways. He told you, listen, we're not going to censor people in order to try to woo advertisers in order to push an agenda. Okay, very clear. He said, what about people's freedom of speech and freedom of expression? What about pronouns and people want to identify, men want to identify as women, women want to identify as men? He said, listen, you can identify as what you want to, but that don't mean that you got to force it or mandate it for somebody else to acknowledge it. Okay, cool. Then he went on to say, um, listen, we have people that worked here at the company, and we all know this. If you go back and you look a couple years ago, when Elon Musk first, first bought the company, and then he started releasing the Twitter files, it showed that they were intentionally slanting and censoring people that had conservative points of view. That's not a secret. Okay, so he answered all of the questions, and he said, listen, we're not going to censor people. And he also said that, listen, advertisers, ad placement does not necessarily mean it's going to be next to anti-Semitic comments or anything like that. We have really good ad placement controls to where you can choose where you're ads are going to land. That's just normal, right? You want to target a certain demographic or people that think a certain type of way in order for you to have the greatest impact for your ad for potential buyers of your product. Okay, so where is the disagreement and why is he continue to try to beat this horse and waste time with this interview instead of asking more pertinent questions? Man, if I had Elon Musk, man, I would ask him so many questions about the PayPal mafia and you know, how close they were to bankruptcy and what made him decide to instill the culture that he had at Tesla to where he was basically sleeping on the floor, where he almost went bankrupt trying to trying to launch the Model 3 and why the Model Y is so ex exceptional and, you know, going over in the BYD and how, you know, in a few short years, the Chinese was able to leapfrog as far as the technologies to ultimately become a really big competitor and how does he think that that's going to affect what it is that he does over in China and how he was able to become one of the only manufacturers over in China to have 100% control of his company instead of, you know, instead of having a partner with other companies similarly to how Ford and GM and Volkswagen and every other manufacturer that's not from China do and how do they protect uh, property and still maintain that relationship and, you know, like, like there's so many different questions that you can get off you know, how were y'all going to make y'all rockets 10 times, 10 times cheaper? And how, do, how was you able to basically unsurp NASA as being the foremost uh, important innovator when it comes to aviation and space? And what do you think about Space Force and how's that going to impact, uh, you know, what it is that you guys are doing at, over at Starlink? And then what about the chips over at Neuralink and all of this stuff? Like Neuralink is a bigger thing, you know, chips that's controlling people's brains and all of this stuff, forget censorship, forget, man, don't nobody care about these stupid questions. I, you would think that these journalists that have these platforms and have the ability to get in front of Elon Musk, not because they're great at what they do, but just because CNN promoted them all of these different times, you would think that these guys actually have more pertinent questions that would be more impactful to society, that would be able to make better clips and then, and then have you know greater impact as far as why these platforms exist in the first place. But he's sitting there talking about the same old, same old nonsense and asking the questions in 30 different ways. You got a whole hour with Elon Musk. You got an hour with one of the most innovative men 
on the face of the earth. You can ask about the loop, you know, as far as uh, transportation. You can ask about um, the battery technology as far as the what's happening as far as, you know, um, the coldness and how it affects the batteries and how that's going to change and, and the tax credits and, you know, whether or not the Biden administration was targeting you when it came to the tax credits and trying to remove Tesla from that in order for other manufacturers to be able to compete and what does he think? Like you can ask a thousand different questions. So many different. Why did you buy? Man, look, bro. Up with you. How do you split your time? What do you think about the people that's tracking your jet? Now, so many different questions that you can source from. And he's sitting here talking about censorship on Twitter. I would be annoyed too. Like, man, y'all, I thought I was getting a person that actually knew what he was talking about. And you sitting here talking about this nonsense. I mean, you're on it. I have to say, I, I, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Jesus okay, but Christ. so is this the same question you want to ask? The same question is you said you said that they are killing the company. He told he told you, he said, listen, choose your questions carefully. You got five minutes left. Don Lemon chooses to say, same question. <laughs> choose your questions carefully. Don Lemon goes, okay, same question. Of all of the things that you could possibly do, of all of the people that Elon Musk, do you know how much an hour of his time is worth? Do you know how much an hour of Elon Musk's time is worth? You got an hour with a billionaire to ask him anything you want to impress upon him, to make a great impression, to become one of his best friends of all time, and you sit here and say, same question? Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. Hey, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you? Listen to this. said that five minutes left. I have to say, I, I, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Okay, but so is the this same the question you want to ask? The same question is you said, you said that they are killing the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you? I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment. And I'm going to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. So I have to be, listen, I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to, like, get you or anything. I was just surprised that you would blame other people for killing the company. I mean, you're the, I mean, when you say the buck stops with the President of the United States, regardless of what happens, and then he doubles down again. He triples down. Jesus Christ. I think that uh, Don Lemon might be the fumbler of the year, y'all. I think that Don Lemon is the fumbler of the year. Good God. Room 9 material absolutely we might have to start room nine at the end of the month right so i why would this why would that question upset you seem upset by it are you i think you and i'm not trying to upset you the way, well you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing questions i think is is not cogent um it's not uh, what not cogent cogent yes go ahead uh so uh the if if if, if given a choice where an advertiser is saying, like, you have to censor all this content on the, on the platform, irrespective of where they're advertising appears, uh, then our answer will be like, look, you, you, you can choose where you want your advertising, what you want your advertiser to appear next to, but you can't insist on censorship of the entire platform. And if you insist on censorship of the entire platform, even where your advertising doesn't appear, uh, then uh, Jesus Christ. obviously we will, we will not uh, want them as an advertiser. So what, what would you say to advertisers, to who have left the platform or who are considering coming back or not coming back? What thing? would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, uh, almost all of our advertisers are coming back to the platform. So it's a very short list of advertisers who are not coming back to the platform. Um, and uh, 
our advertising revenue is rising rapidly uh, and our subscription revenue is rising rapidly and I feel very optimistic about the future of the X Bowl. Okay. Listen, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? Let's go that way. Oh my God. You're an intense, listen, this is the line of questioning. You have possibly one of the richest men in the world, one of the most innovative people of our time. And the question that he asks is, you're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. And I had a tough childhood. You did? So, yeah. How um, so? Right, Walter Isaacson goes into it in the read book. Read the book. I read the book. Don't you know that he was born in South Africa and he got a brother and his father was what it was and his, his mother? Bro! Read the book. Do your research. Good God. And, and we only have a couple minutes left, so. All right. Too long to, to describe. Uh, so the one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. Okay. Again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you, you just. No, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. Okay. So we're just going over time. Okay. All right. I understand that. Um, so you, when you talk about, you said you were born that way. Is that. Um, Jesus Christ. Did you, you think that the way that you see the world has to do with your relationship with anyone, perhaps your, your father or someone in, in your family? I think we're all affected by the people we grew, we grew up with. Uh, my aspiration is to uh, do whatever it takes to extend, the, extend consciousness into the future. That's my goal, um, to make life multiplanetary as part of extending constant consciousness into the future. Has this, has, have the past few years and considering everything that's gone on, has it been difficult for you and your family life? Jesus what? It's been okay. So then how do you see your legacy, Elon? How, how do you see how well, people see I, you I, in the... First of all, I say that the, um, if I died knowing that I, that I did what was right or, or did my best to do what was right, and even if in the history books they said I did, did wrong, I would still feel okay about that. I care about the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. Um, I think we should view civilization uh, as tenuous, as fragile. Um, if, you, if you do study history poorly, I don't think that he's playing poorly, dumb. I think that Dom Lemon is actually a lemonhead. They don't always go life. up. Um, so we should do everything we possibly can to preserve I, I, I think uh, and, I see why CNN got rid of it. as we know it. Yeah. Um, and improve it. Because um, if it's not for the producers as writing the questions for him on CNN, then he probably would seem a lot less bright than he really is, honestly. This is why producers make so much money. This is why you have to have people in the background. Very few people could do what we do here on The Millionaire Morning Show. Let me give myself a round of applause. And then let me also give the chat a round of applause for what it is that we do every, here, every day here on The Millionaire Morning Show. Uh, very few people are able to do what we, what we do on this platform, y'all give thought-provoking content, entertain you, put the medicine in the candy and actually have compelling compelling uh, thoughts and, and insight that we can share with you guys on a regular basis. Look at this, look at this lemon head. It's become more enlightened over time. And we uh, <laughs> therefore wanna address civilizational risks. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, we don't have, for example, demographic collapse, which is the case in a lot of countries, uh, just very low growth rate. Um, we, we want to avoid, obviously, avoid World War III. Anything that is a civilizational risk. That's what I care about, civilizational risks. Um, how do we extend consciousness into the future such that we are able to better understand the, the nature of reality? Yeah. That's what I care about. That's my motivation. I know you have to go. If you'll just give me, a, uh, I'll do a rapid fire thing here. Is, if there, is there anything that you would change about um, anything that you've done? in your life, in the past or recently? Um, I've made many mistakes over the years. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and fix them, uh, but I don't have a time machine. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I appreciate it. Like, thank you so much. So that's it. And as Elon would say, 
You be the judge. We are, and you're an idiot. You're, you're an idiot in real life of all of the things. Jesus Christ. What a, what a base head. KC Professional and DJ Services. Uh, an event says, my bad fam, Shy town checking in. Great work. Thank you, my friend, for holding me down. Appreciate you. Chris James in the building. Chris, jo Chris James. Chris James. Let me just slide this your way. Definitely need a coaching call about the Detroit area, amongst other things. Hey, email me, Chris, at AntonDaniels413 at gmail.com. I'm going to look out for your email. Email me, man. I love you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you for always supporting the platform, bro. ABJ's Why Strong and Safe says, Don Lemon, <laughs> we don't know what his sexuality is. Uh, Tom Du Bois from the Boondocks. We don't know what Don's uh, sexuality is, so we're not going to assume. Uh, Brock says, Pass Love offering NVIDIA's keynote two days ago was mind-blowing. The operating systems they're creating for robots and chips are super intriguing. Yeah, we can dig into that in Stock Club next week. Uh, JP says, Lemon had a hefty wish list and thought Elon was Santa. Mike Razor says, Elon's whole demeanor changed. Choose wisely. I'll take that as a very, very, very big deal. Big deal. For dude like that, say choose wisely. I'm saying, I, first thing, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I ain't mean to offend you. You know what? Let me let me be accountable for my ways. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like asking Bill Gates what's his favorite PC. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Says J Rock 24K. 24 karat magic in the air. Uh, Leland Brown says, shout out to Leland Brown in the building. <laughs> My birthday is today. Thank you for pouring into the community like you do, brother. I'm part of the 300K Club, Gun Club, Multiple Properties Club, Stop Portfolio Club. To round it off, my birthday gift to me is joining the Bag Chasers. What up, though? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Leland Brown. Happy birthday to you. Yes, Time Dog does sing happy birthday even to my fellas. Let me tell y'all something. I love everybody. Happy birthday, Leland Brown, and congratulations for joining the Bag Chasers. If y'all not a part of the Chasers, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the, top of the chat. Everybody in the chat, can we get a happy birthday wishing for my homeboy Leland Brown in the building? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, big dog, and welcome to the family. Uh, my girl, Brittany B, says he don't have a time machine yet. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, and my dog, Classy B, says Chat GBT would have asked better questions. You know what's so funny? I was using Chat GBT uh, last night and this morning. I was getting it in. All kind of questions. Solving for all kind of stuff. We was getting it in. All right. Listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to my dog, Classy B. Another show in the record books, y'all. Listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, I have my Asi acai bowl coming here. So we're going to work, we're going to grind, we're going to hustle, we're going to get it. But more importantly, you guys are the greatest, the greatest audience on earth. And I decided not to grow my hair. Only because y'all was giving me too much nonsense yesterday. It's only because of y'all. It's y'all fault that I decided that I'm not going to grow my hair out. I'm still on the fence about it. I'm like 90, 96'4". 90%, 96%, no, I'm not going to grow my hair out. 4% <laughs> that I am going to grow my hair out. But I can grow my hair out. I can do it. I choose not to. Make sure y'all tune into the live stream tonight. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be lit. All right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I need y'all to... <laughs> y'all acting ugly. First of all, I can grow my hair out. I don't know where y'all getting this from as though I can't grow my hair out. I can't grow my hair out. I'm not going to keep fighting with y'all about it, but I can grow my hair out. You'll pay me to grow my hair out? <laughs> I 
Yes, I can. Say so YouTube shut it down after my hair pick. My hair pick is sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I'm 96% sure I'm not going to grow my hair out after y'all gave me such a hard time yesterday, but I'm 4% sure that I still want to do it. So I'm not 100% sold yet. How about that one? Y'all, listen, y'all made me change my shirt today. I got on a hoodie like it's uh, after hours or something. Y'all keep telling me I can't grow my hair out. Y'all just want me to be the same. Y'all want to y'all want to see me stuck in place. <laughs> I rage quit yesterday. <laughs> oh, y'all so ugly. It's all right though. It's all right. That's okay though. I can take, listen, that's cool. I can take a joke just like everybody else. I'm going to let y'all get on me today because I'll be kicking y'all butts every other day on Wednesday nights and then Monday nights and stuff. So this is y'all turn. This is, go ahead, get it in. Anton Jefferson, YouTube will block you. Hairlines matter. Anton look like E Black, DJ Khaled. Time Dog is a six Jackson. Get locks. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two big time in the house says mess. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm staying bald now. Y'all shame me. See how shame it works? You see how shame it works? Y'all shame me. And y'all say shame and don't work. Y'all didn't convince me to change my shirt today. Don't grow no hair the whole nine yards. That's cool. Y'all shame me. And y'all keep saying that it don't work on women. Shaming works. I was a perfect example of the fact that shaming works. I don't like y'all no more for the rest of the day. I'm going to see y'all tonight. I need y'all <laughs> I need y'all to do me one more favor before we get up out of here. Thank you, Sharon Hammonds. I appreciate you for supporting me and holding me down. I need y'all to do me one more favor before we get out of here. Boy, you got to have tough skin to rock out on the Millionaire Morning Show because the chat don't hold no punches. They treat me the same way that they treat y'all. They don't love me today. They don't love me like they say that they love me. They treat me just like a regular person. We all in the same boat. Let me tell you something. I'm regular. You regular. We all regular. We all put on our pants one one leg at a time, and apparently we all get these jokes the same way. The same way I dish it is the same way that I could take it. I love you guys. I y'all my family. Y'all my family. Y'all my extended family. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna see y'all tonight with y'all big heads. Peace. Look at Messi still throwing me, talking about she loved me. You don't love me. You don't love me. <laughs>